If you do an online search of swifts, you will get an abundance of images of the bird in flight. There will also be a couple pictures of the bird in someone's hand, not standing, but a sort of awkward sitting or leaning forward on its chest. They are often mislabeled as swallows. In fact, early ornithologists thought that that's what they were. And while swifts and swallows do have similarities in body size, wing shape, and foraging style, swifts take those characteristics and bump it up about 10 notches. Take one look and notice the torpedo-shaped body, tiny bill, long, narrow wings, short tail, and seemingly no legs. All of these characteristics indicate that this bird was made for two things, to be in flight and to eat flying insects. In every way, they are specialists and not generalists. Their heads are basically all eyes and mouth, and for good reason. They need acute vision for capturing aerial prey, while they themselves are also in flight. Their large, deep-set, and nearly forward-facing eyes help make this possible. If you look closely at the area above their eyes, they have a structure that hangs over the top, like a visor. To me, it looks akin to the supraorbital ridge that raptors have. They also have movable bristles in front of the eye that help to control glare. To pluck insects out of the air, you don't want to be weighed down by a large bill. But what is needed is a cavernous mouth that can scoop up prey while in flight. The hinge of their jaw reaches all the way back to underneath their eyes. Swifts are so adapted for flight that they only leave the skies to roost for the night or to nest. Inquiries have been made as to whether or not swifts even have feet and legs and why they can't perch. The reason is they have very short legs, which is why they don't perch or stand upright. I don't have exact measurements of the leg length of various swifts, but just compare this picture on the left to those of various songbirds on the right. The difference is quite striking. They have small yet strong feet, which allows them to cling to the walls of cliffs, caves, hollowed out tree trunks, or masonry. They are of the few bird species in the world that have pamprodactyl feet, where the two outermost toes can rotate forward or backward. Long, narrow wings allow them to fly at high speeds and make sudden twists and turns as they pursue prey. They even bathe in flight, swooping down to let water make contact with their bellies and then shaking it off as they fly. Swifts are found on six continents in the world. As strict insectivores, they need perpetual summer and travel between the northern and southern hemispheres to get the best crop of insects no matter what time of year. In the non-breeding season, swifts roost communally. Some species, like the chimney swift, have been observed in huge flocks, swirling over a chimney, funneling into roost for the night. I can imagine that their constant flight during the day generates a tremendous amount of heat and once they stop, they cool down considerably. Roosting together is a way to keep warm by sharing body heat. On cold nights or when inclement weather has reduced their access to insects, swifts can go into the hypothermic state of torpor to further reduce their energy needs. Swifts nest in caves, rock crevices, chimneys, underneath bridges, or hollowed out trees. They will also take up residence in air vents, silos, barns, or garages. Nests are typically a half bowl of twigs, sometimes including moss, grass, or plant down, and are attached to a vertical wall with their saliva. The white nest swiftlet of Malaysia and Indonesia, also known as the edible nest swiftlet, makes its nest entirely from saliva. Its nests are considered a rare delicacy in Chinese cooking and are harvested for bird's nest soup. Sadly, this interference has greatly affected their populations and conservation efforts are now underway. And for chimney swifts, as modern chimneys become less accessible for them to nest in, standalone nesting towers have been built to help them feel more at home. And in case you're wondering, 
Before there were chimneys, they nested in tree cavities, but turned to chimneys when resources became more scarce. Everything that these birds do is in the extremes. What kind of swifts are in your area? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.